In this video, I'm gonna be painting the most psychological painting in the world, Mona Lisa, by myself as a young artist. It might seem a bit unusual because Leonardo da Vinci has dedicated his life to explore anatomy, physiology and geology to create the Mona Lisa and her changing appearance and the illusion of the smile has been puzzled to the viewers over centuries. Literally, it's a magic which art and science has perfectly blended. But this is me, just a 23-year-old portrait artist, I mean tiny creator on this platform. This is gonna be a quite hard experience, however my intention is to invest even countless hours to that project to execute the final outcome more lifelike while revealing what specific method that Da Vinci has been used to create the illusion of Mona Lisa. My very first task was finding a good reference. After conducting numerous searches and testing various images, I came to realize that recreating the exact Mona Lisa painting would be more challenging than I initially thought. The question of did the Mona Lisa appear as it does today? Many professionals believe that yellowish brown hue is a result of varnish yellowing over time. However, such a restoration is unlikely happened due to the concern about damaging the original painting. Fortunately, there exists a copy of Mona Lisa, the painting called Prado Mona Lisa, which consumes closely resembled the original painting and created by one of Leonardo's students at the same time he did. This copy offers insight into how vibrant the colors may have been when the Mona Lisa was first painted. So I finding that reference images were such a big achievement that I did to make my painting process easier. The references are ready and I am about to start the sketch process. The first main decision that I had to get in that sketching process, how to get our main subject onto our paper. I had a few options running through my mind. Should I go for it freehand style and rely on my skills or maybe use some tracing technique. After some thoughts and few trial sketches in my sketchbook, I decided to go with the grid method. It seems like the most practical and the suitable choice for this project. The grid method aligns perfectly with the focus of this project. It allows me to break down the painting into smaller precisely measured sections, ensuring that every detail and every nouns is faithfully replicated. Since I was started sketching, I've been using really light lines throughout my whole process of the drawing. Hopefully our sketching process is gonna be done. Before jumping into the painting process straightly, it worth to introduce you how Da Vinci has painted the Mona Lisa because my rest of the process is depending on his methods and techniques. In the original painting, Leonardo started with a thin poplar wood panel and applied an undercoat of lead white to hoping for a reflective base. And then he used painting as semi-transparent glazes with just tiny amount of pigment mixed with oils. And it was more like a wash. Applied layer by layer, scientific analysis has shown that he used up to 30 layers of glazes on the Mona Lisa. That it measures only 40 micrometers, which is half the width of a human hair. So here I am about to use the watercolor as my primary medium to paint due to the fact that watercolor's unique transparency and layering ability. That ability allows me to capture the same luminosity and depth as the way that Da Vinci has done in the Mona Lisa. And I started the painting from the background using a little bit of pigment with lots of water. So here I'll be using these mixtures layer by layer until I achieve the right contrast and saturation. In fact replicate the glazing technique that Da Vinci has used. Once the first layer dries, I begin with my second layer, over and over, around 10 to 15 layers to achieve the right contrast. Certainly, it requires some amount of time, but not as much as oil. As the main illusion that we see in the Mona Lisa is when we are seeing her from different angles, she is moving towards us. So let me tell you why, how it's technically happened. If we carefully look at the background of the Mona Lisa, we can see the horizon line is doesn't line up. It's crooked. That's the optical trick that Leonardo intentionally created on the painting. But why? When our brain receives conflict visual information, it jumps between those images to find out which one is correct. But we can't find the right answer. This constant revaluation tricks us into thinking we are seeing the Mona Lisa from different angles. It creates the illusion that she is moving towards us. So around 20 hours of painting process, hopefully our background is done and I am quite satisfied about the result. So I think it's time to move on to the main subject. I'm gonna start to paint the figure with her clothes and slowly move on to the rest of it.
As you can see our references the original painting itself is in the best option to use as our primary reference here including varnish alloying which has altered its appearance and even the intricate details are not appear clearly for just like this recreation. So the second copy was extremely helpful me to have a better identification and get a clear idea about the colors over here. The beautiful and daunting thing about the watercolor is it's always going to be dry differently, it's always going to be blend differently. So we must surrender the process, let go and just allow it to do its thing. After dedicating such an exhausting time into the intricate detailing process, now I'm about to enter the main magical part of the painting, her face. So I wanna mention that the tricky part with the watercolors is that once you put down the colors onto the paper, you can't easily undo or any other way to fix the mistake like we can with the oils. Getting the shading right is critical. So I'm taking my time to gradually build up the skin tone making sure not to oversaturate any areas. And I'm carving out her mysterious smile little by little. In the year 2000, Dr. Margaret Livingstone, a Harvard neuroscientist, discovered that Mona Lisa's smile comes and goes because how the visual system is designed, not because of the expression. When we look at a face, we spend most of our time focused on the other person's eyes. As we look into her eyes, the shadows and tones suggest the curvature of her smile. But when your eyes go directly into the Mona Lisa's mouth, your central vision doesn't see the shadow and she isn't smiling. Then scan back and forth between her eyes and lips and her expression changes. Yes, that is not our imagination. It's all to do with how we see, not how we think. A dream to recreate the one of the most iconic portraits in the world. It wasn't easy at all. There were moments of doubts, countless hours of dedications and a lot of learning along the way. Sometimes I put the whole idea of mass study behind due to the self-imposed barrier. But precisely those challenges make this achievement so special. I may not be Da Vinci or I didn't want to pretend that I am greater than him at all. But I am an artist who believes the power of dedication and beauty of creativity. So that's not just about replicating the Da Vinci's strokes. It's all about the breaking limitations we set on ourselves thank you so much for joining me on this incredible adventure if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up share and subscribe see you in the next one